Hi, my name is Raphael Heath, the Head of Geography at the Royal High School Bath, and this is part six of a series of tutorials supported by the Royal Geographical Society's Innovative Teaching Grant, looking at how uh, students can develop investigations uh, into the patterns and geography of crime. And uh, this part's about data enrichment using ArcGIS Online. The things I showed before involved getting the crime data in, uh, which is shown here by the dots, and putting in secondary data like key index and multiple deprivation or economic data and so on. Uh, but what we had so far, for example, this deprivation map is a, a rating of deprivation ranking from 1 to 30 or 1,000, uh, which is fine. It shows a pattern. It's easy. It's freely available. Um, but uh, I might want to sort of bring in some more original data into this, such as income, and I can't quite find or get that income data perhaps uh, in the form I want or for the area I want. Uh, so you can use an enrichment tool to do that. So for example, if I go to this index of multiple deprivation, uh, you can see that these are all different uh, shapes, uh, polygons as it were, uh, with the data in, which this one's highlighted. And what I want to do is ask uh, Esri, who uh, provide this software, to basically give me some new original data from their own databases that they hold. Uh, for that area. So I want, in this case, real income data. What what are wealth variations in this area, perhaps, to help explain crime patterns, perhaps other variables about uh, the population in that region that I don't already have. So I can go to this uh, analysis tool here. I've showed you various analysis tools before, like uh, analyzing patterns. So I'm going to go to this one called data enrichment and enrich layer. And you can see here that the uh, first thing it does is uh, gives me the choice of layers. I've got all these different layers in my map that I could enrich the data for. It's picked the index multiple deprivation because that's where I went from, but if it wasn't selected I would have to make sure I select it because otherwise it would enrich the data based on some other layer. So that means I want to enrich it based on these kind of shapes, these polygons. I then collect, uh, select variables and it already knows I'm in the United Kingdom because I've zoomed in, but otherwise you might have to pick uh, the UK from the list of countries and things that I can uh, ask it to find data on for me. Now this is something that consumes credits. You need a organisation subscription account for this. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if the free 60 day account allows you to do it or not uh, within that time period. It gives you some credits perhaps to play around with but otherwise uh, it consumes credits. So here I picked on income and things I can pick here. Purchasing power per capita is a, a, a sort of form of expressing how much income people have per person. So I'm going to pick that one. Uh, you can see I've selected one variable now at the top here. If I go back to the list, I've got other things I could pick. So um, I went to education. You can see there's various different things you can pick here. So I might have uh, people without qualifications, perhaps. There might be issues with... Uh, uh, being vulnerable to crime or perhaps committing crime that's related to that. Uh, if I click on the keep browsing you'll see that uh, there are other things you can pick here such as um, uh, level 4 qualifications, so higher level qualifications down to level 1 qualifications, uh, uh, percentage of population in that area. So I could pick multiples of these. The more I pick the more credits it costs. So I'll just show you the principle of this and the more time it might take as well. Uh, I could also look at different age groups that live in an area to see let's say I don't know 60 years and older. Perhaps there's an issue with uh, I don't know, more burglaries in those areas because they're uh, easy pickings perhaps, or maybe less burglaries because they're at home more. But uh, either way, these are things that could be looked at as part of investigation. So I've picked three variables. You can see what they are now, and I say apply. You can see these are listed here. If I don't want one, I can get rid of it at this stage. Uh, to find areas to enrich is not relevant for this. If I had a picked a dot here to enrich then uh, I might say within one mile, ten miles, or whatever of that dot is the area I want it to look at. But these are already shapes uh, that are picked here. So this is called Enriched Index Multiple Deprivation for the South West already. I'm just going to add the word. Let's uh, get rid of a bit of this, it's a little bit long. Uh, I'll just put test Enriched Index. Yep. Okay, I'm going to put that in my folder test. I've explained about saving things before. And uh, yeah, it says use current map extent. This is where it's particularly important because if I don't have this ticked, um, if I just go to show credits, uh, you can see that uh, how many shapes are there in this area. Well, it's going to try and work it out for me and then work out how much it's going to cost me in credits to actually perform this. So there's 72 shapes here. It's going to cost me two credits this time. If I hadn't picked use current map extent, then it would do this for the whole of whatever the southwest area and it will create hundreds of uh, results for me but cost me a lot more credits. So make sure you kind of uh, 
consider that and have that ticked and so on uh, and zoom to the right area so this means that I just want it to calculate on this area I'm not going to do anywhere else uh, I click run analysis now and uh, it's going to do a little bit of work and thinking behind the scenes and you can see the wearing symbol here means it's doing the uh, processing in the servers behind the scenes in Esri uh, to try and get this data for me so I'm really creating an essential original data in the sense that I'm defining uh, the areas that I want the data for. So, you know, is this primary, secondary data? I suppose it is technically secondary data, of course, you haven't collected it yourself, but you certainly controlled it. Certainly if you picked one of these dots uh, or had dots for the data that you've kind of uh, customized and then say I want the data to represent one or two uh, kilometers around that dot, then essentially you're sort of creating new original data. So this is where primary and secondary data in a sense overlap uh, within a study and investigation. So it's doing a bit of thinking now, I think it's finished, and here it is, it's produced a map for me. I'll get rid of the other layers that look confusing. And it's a lovely blue looking map, which doesn't tell me very much, but you'll see when I click on one of the shapes here, that it's got all the deprivation data that was originally there, but it also has some other data at the end of it that wasn't in the original deprivation layer, including the purchasing power in pounds per capita, or is it pounds or dollars, I'll check that in a moment, uh, 18,700 in that area. It's got the population with... Uh, uh, 16 plus qualifications, the total population age 60 plus and so on living in that area. Um, so let's just go to changing the symbols again on this one so I can see what this really looks like. So it's just showing the shapes by location. Let's go for purchasing power per capita and here we go. It shows uh, the rich and poor areas now in uh, purchasing power, I think this is in pounds, uh, I see a symbol here but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I can go for a colour ramp or I can go for my uh, class intervals and uh, play around with the way the data looks and uh, the intervals in the data as you know, as I explained before, make the map look different and more or less effective. Um, and I could change the colour scheme there if I keep it as it is for the moment. Okay. Done. So we can see that the dark blue areas have a higher purchasing power. Uh, they are 18 to 19,000 uh, pounds on average per person in these areas. And this area has 19,000 pounds purchasing power per capita. Whereas an area over here has in the lower symbols less than uh, 12,000, 13,000. So here it's got uh, 11,600. So I visualize that data. I've created new original data. It's real pounds and pens data now. Um, it's added quality and value to my map. I'll just show you as I zoom out that uh, it's only done it for the area I zoomed into plus the boundaries as they extended for my zoom so the rest of the UK isn't done why, why it cost me only a couple of credits to do this and if I bring back my crime data again in one form or another I can work out how I can visualize this best alongside it. It's always difficult showing multiple data but here you can see clusters of crime data and uh, and class of income data. I've got higher income here in this area. There seems to be less crime. Got a little pocket of medium income here. Uh, we've also got the city centres and other factors, and then uh, low income areas over here uh, where there seems to be more crime clusters. Of course, this is all crime, so remember the idea of filtering the data uh, because uh, it's probably not relevant to be looking at all crime. You probably want to look at something specific that might relate to income. So go back down here, and um, there's no reason why, I don't know. Um, Bike, bicycle theft maybe or criminal damage and arson will it or won't it relate to uh, to levels of income let's have a look at uh, perhaps filtering the data again sorry that was the wrong button to pick uh, filtering the data let's look at um, uh, which one shall we pick uh, crime type is use the starts with again be a little bit lazy so this is going to be criminal damage and arson only apply filter and we can see sort of a cluster here and a cluster here criminal damage and arson not so much over here perhaps that uh, has some uh, links or relationships with income levels that we've now uh, derived and shown anyway that's the challenge of your investigation to exploring data playing with it switching layers on and off filtering them exploring patterns looking for relationships 
Uh, so that's a little overview of the idea of what's called data enrichment, the way you can actually grab data that exists sort of secretly, as it were, behind the scenes uh, and process it. Um, actually, one thing I should actually mention on this is there are other ways of data enrichment. We've talked about using these polygons and shapes uh, files, but you could actually uh, just create your own area. So let's just try this uh, for a sec. So let's just go for a very simple way of doing this, add map notes. This is a very easy manual way. Um, so I might say study areas. So let's say you're doing some field work, study areas, you're collecting data, you want to focus on some particular regions. So I'm just going to create a new layer. This is basically just a drawing layer on the map. You can write on it and put text or pins and so on. Let's just put a, a few pins in the map, let's say. So let's say, you know, I was going to do some field work and I was going to do it in this area. That might be called uh, site one, let's say. Uh, close. Another way of doing this, but this is the simplest. Uh, and then this area over here, and this was site two. Close and somewhere over here, which I know is very different. Site three. Okay. So uh, I've just put in some dots for fieldwork location. I could have done it based on shapes and areas, as you can see here. Uh, but I'll just do it this way to show you the slightly different way the enrichment works. So I'm going to now, I've got three dots of data, I've collected no data, maybe I've collected some primary data from that area, but let's say I want to now get some enrichment data to add and um, link to my primary data, maybe I've collected sort of a, a fear of crime survey or a, a visual quality uh, risk of crime in those areas based on sort of street lighting, CCTV, um, um, neighborhood watch schemes and so on in those areas, give them a rating score, something like that. So I've done some other sort of data collection perhaps, but I just want to enrich the data. So now it's slightly different, I've got points of data here. So I'm going to click the uh, enrich data again. Uh, I'm going to be careful to click the right area, so it's clicked study area points uh, this time. And I uh, just have to wait for this to go green before I can use it. For the select variables. Um, and this time I'm going to pick the data in a slightly different way. So select variables. Uh, let's just go for income. I showed you how to get this before. Purchasing power. Okay. So I've just picked one variable for the moment just to illustrate this. And now I can sort of define the area. So this is asking me, let's move this across a little bit so you can see fully what I'm doing. Okay, so it's asking me to pick a distance from each of these points to enrich my data on. Now just be aware, if I pick too small a distance, it won't work very well. I can do this based on a sort of walking distance or drive time, which is quite clever. So how long does it take to drive from this area, walk from this area, um, or just a straight line distance, uh, just as a sort of uh, in that area. Um, so you can play around with those. They're quite interesting for certain functionality. I'm just going to use line distance, uh, and let's say within uh, a... Let's say two kilometers off those points. Just be aware if you put very small areas, uh, like you know five meters, it might not really return any data because uh, you're asking for a very very small area. Uh, but uh, have a play with it and see what you can accomplish with it. Uh, do some tests perhaps. So this is enriched study area points income for bath test. So I'm going to save this in my test folder. You save it where it suits you. And if I show credits, it's only three points. You can see here it's not going to use very many credits. So I'll do the run analysis again. So what it's going to do now is calculate a three kil uh, two kilometer circle around these quite big areas. I could have picked somewhere smaller, perhaps a smaller unit, one or two kilometers, but uh, just to show you the principle, um, which is then going to tell me what the income is within that, those uh, distances from each point. Uh, and then this is a way of kind of, again, it's this really, uh, I would say, is collecting primary data, really. You're, you're defining the dots, you're defining the locations, and you're asking for it to compute and work out some very specific data on those locations for you. Uh, and then, as I say, maybe comparing it to the crime data and other things that you're looking at. So this gives you a lot of control over the data. So now it's created it. Um, and you can see one, two, three dots are created. So if I... Uh, click off things that aren't relevant. So study areas I'm going to get rid of. Get rid of my other dots just for simplicity at the moment. So what I've got is three dots here in rich study points and uh, it tells me my buffer is two kilometers and so on and it gives me purchasing power for two kilometers from that uh, particular point. Um, it does the same for this one. It tells me the income here is 14,000 and so on. So if I want to then visualize that uh, just very quickly. Let's 
make a way of showing it. So it's just showing location at the moment. I want to show purchasing power per capita. And there we go. Three dots, high, lower income is shown by proportional circles done. I can play around with that as you know. And here's my crime data again. Or this one is just for uh, one particular type of crime that I had filtered on here criminal damage and arson and I can see again if there are any correlations uh, with this sort of patterns in the data. It's just a very simple way of showing you to enrich. I wasn't really doing it for the investigation as such but uh, if I was I might have focused a few dots around this area, a few dots around this area and compared it to areas where there are low amounts of this crime. Uh, but it immediately shows me some variation in the data. I've got real income data there based on purchasing power crack capita for a particular point I've selected and a particular distance from that point. So that shows you the power of using data enrichment, a very powerful tool within ArcGIS Online and to, to gather and uh, and to create data for you know anywhere in the world uh, and particularly thinking about the UK and crime data patterns that I've been demonstrating. So I'm Raphael Heath, Head of Geography at Royal High School Bath and uh, this project is supported by the Royal Geographical Society as part of the Innovative Teaching Grant.